Hi, my name's Helen Smith and I work for Unilever. I've been working here for uh, just over two and a half years. Um, I did my degree in chemical engineering and I now work in our process development department for the DO category. Our responsibility is to take a product from bench scale in a, in a small 500ml beaker and scale it up to our pilot plant which is about 30 litres and then take it up to a production scale which is sort of a two to three tonne vessel. Firstly, our, our marketing uh, department come up with a, with a concept, something that we know that consumers are looking for. So we do that by going through con talking to consumers and looking at, at market research to see where there's gaps in the market and where our products could fit. Our formulation team, based uh, in our research and development department, then translate this idea and concept into an actual product. So we, we start off with some solvent oils, which, is in, which are in the beaker, and then we had to add some structure to add uh, some thickness to, to the uh, formulation. Um, and these are typically clays. We also have to add the, the active, so that is the aluminium salt, that is the actual active ingredient that, that stops people sweating. And then, of course, we need to add a great fragrance to keep everyone smelling great. So once we're happy with the formulation made at bench scale, we're looking to how we can take that up to pilot scale. Now pilot is about 30 litres, so three ti uh, 10 times bigger than uh, we, we carry out the experiments at bench. Obviously this means we've got greater quantities of raw materials to be added, so we can't just use a spatula or, um, to add all the raw materials. If you look at the kit here, you can see that we've got a uh, a hopper here where we add the powders which are drawn in through a vacuum rather than what we did at the bench when we simply added it by hand. What we saw on the bench with the silverstone was simply a dip in mixer like a whisk, like imagine whisking some eggs. When we take it up to a bigger scale we, we can't just dip in um, a mixer, we need to send it through some pipe work to make sure it really is thoroughly mixed. This is really a vital step in the, in the formulation and making an aerosol. So when we're making a product, the times that we mix it for and how long it's mixed are important. Um, we need to make sure they're properly blended before we add the next ingredient. So we start off with the oils and then we're adding the clays. And before we can add the active powder, we want to make sure the clays and the structurants are really mixed in with the, uh, with the oils before we um, draw the vacuum to take in the, the aluminium salts. So when we're happy, we, we do some various tests on the finished product that we've produced in the pilot plant. We test things like viscosity. So viscosity is how thick the product is, so how difficult it is to, to mix. If you think of stirring treacle versus stirring water, uh, uh, treacle has a, a bigger, thicker viscosity than uh, water does. Um, we also might put products in, into uh, storage to see whether there's any adverse interactions once uh, the product sits for, for a while. And then after that long range of experiments, then we, we're happy that we've done all the development work that needs to happen in the pilot plant and we're ready to take that up to full scale production. So the point that we take it over from uh, Helen and, and her team is when they finish their factory tests uh, with the new formulation and products. Our job then is uh, simply just to actually run with a real life product. So we take it over when all the different safety and quality checks have been carried out. Helen and the team have uh, confirmed that uh, the additions that we add the ingredients in is correct and simply we just take over a live production one. So when it comes on into our plant we're then producing good product that's actually going to go into cans that's then going to end up in the supermarket shelves. So we now move up from the pilot plant level of 30 litres to 2 tonnes. 2 tonnes is roughly the weight of two family sized cars. So to actually try and transport the raw materials into the vessels begins to become a challenge for us. We can do this in a number of ways. We can do this by bulk raw material feed which is when we can pipe the bulk raw material straight into the mixer and we can also add the powders using a vacuum system. The importance of when making a batch it's very important that we add materials 
in the correct order, which Helen's already uh, decided for us, and it's also important that we stir it at the correct times. We use a computer system to help us add the correct amount of materials. The way the computer system works is quite simple. The operators are able to tell the computer exactly the amount of materials they would like to add to the vessel, and then the computer system simply adds it in for us. So if we consider how engineering has made this possible, when we consider scaling up from a bench level where we might have only made 10 litres, we then need to scale up to a process that's able to make two tonnes reliably and consistently. The key challenges we have are how to get the correct ingredients into the mixer, the correct raw materials in the correct quantities. And engineering allows us to use computers, pumps, mixers, all integrating them together to make sure we have the quality of the batch every time. So the way that the product enters the can is by a rotary filling machine. The filling machine works by pumping the product into the can. The machine has to be very reliable because as you can imagine if we're making over 400 million units we have to make sure we put the correct amount in every can. There are a number of components that make up an aerosol can. These include the empty can, the valve, the cap and obviously the product which Helen has talked about before. When you look around the packing line, you see that these materials are delivered in pallets. So the first operation on the packing line is to depalletize the empty cans onto the line. The can then passes along the line through a date coder. The importance of the date coder is that we have traceability of every product we make. The next operation is the filling operation. The cans are filled via a rotary filler and the product is pumped into the can. When we're making more than 400 million aerosols a year, it's really important we have the reliability of the filler so we know the exact amounts we're putting in each can. The next stage of the operation is to insert the valve into the can. The valve is inserted into the can and then crimped airtight, then enters the liquid propellant filling area. We force the liquid propellant into the can under pressure. By doing this, the can will then leave the liquid propellant area cold. The next change of the operation is to check the weight of the can. It's very important that we've got the right level of product, which has been made by a process area, and also propellant. We have a check weighing machine that checks the weight of every one of our products. If the product is too heavy or too light, the product is rejected from the packing line. The cans then enter a machine called a test bath. The test bath is designed to heat the can up above 50 Celsius. This is to ensure that the crimp and valve are correctly sealed. 50 Celsius is a lot higher temperature for normal usage of an aerosol can. The next machine we go to is a capping machine. The capping machine simply dunks the cap on every can. If for any reason there isn't a cap on top of a can, we have an automatic quality reject lane. The next machine we're going to go to is the final part of the operation. This is when we put the final packaging around the cans. The cans are now in their completed state for sale. It's engineering that's enabled us to produce a world-class packing line that's able day on day to produce products that require safety and quality standards that Unilever has. The factory is able to produce more than 450 million aerosol cans in a year and that's enough to cover more than 150 football pitches. The best thing about being an engineer in Unilever is that every day is different and all the challenges are very different. One of the biggest buzzes you can get from being an engineer here is knowing that you're supplying the whole of Europe with aerosols. Every day when you go into a supermarket you can look on a shelf and look at the can that you might have made only a month ago.